the neutral zone. Waiting for Captain Picard's return from a Federation conference, the Enterprise crew discovers a disabled 20th century Earth satellite. So the Enterprise finds an old Earth satellite floating through space, and I thought it was weird that they're an exploration ship. It's from Earth, but Riker just says, It's just a piece of space debris. If we hadn't been sitting here waiting for the captain, we wouldn't have noticed it. Let it be. Let nature take its course. That's a weird stance for him to take. What else are they out there for? And they're just waiting for Picard to get back. Data even points out that they have the time to check it out. So Data and Worf beam over to go check it out. Data mentions that there's minimal oxygen and that a generator is still going, which presumably is why they're not freezing out there in this thing floating in space. But it makes it sound like they didn't check that stuff before they went over, they just kind of beamed over. And Worf seems totally okay with everything, even though there's minimal oxygen. I know he's a Klingon, I don't know what they breathe, but it doesn't seem to really make a lot of sense there. So Worf walks over to a sliding door and it doesn't open and he just walks right into it. Is that what happens when you're at Walmart and the sliding door doesn't open? Do you walk right into to it i mean he's not looking down at his space phone or whatever he's just walking he literally puts his face into the door he's an idiot i get him reacting the way he does kind of but then he says must be sealed probably with age it's a door handle wharf i know their drawers have buttons on them i don't know about their refrigerators have you never encountered anything with a handle yeah and then he was gonna go shoot it open and data with his positronic brain says i figured it out <laughs> So Picard comes back on board and he tells them they're going into the neutral zone, and he says they need to have a staff meeting. So Picard says two Federation outposts have been destroyed, they're missing communication between others, and it's suspected it's the Romulans. And they haven't had contact with the Romulans for over 50 years. And he says, everything we know about them is based on rumor or conjecture. And the way they were talking about them, hmm, that sounds an awful lot like how you tried to introduce the Ferengi before, but failed miserably. So this feels like a second chance to try and get a new threat involved. Everything about the Romulans before the Romulans actually show up at the end reminded me a lot of the original series episode where they introduced the Romulans. It's kind of the same thing there where they don't know what to expect. They're dealing with the neutral zone. I'm pretty sure it was the same thing where things were being attacked and they went to investigate and they weren't sure what the Romulans were going to do. It was very similar. Starfleet thinks the Romulans may be seeking confrontation. I would think if two outposts got blown up, somebody might be seeking confrontation. Yeah, there were times when I didn't quite understand why Picard was so strongly opposing Riker and Worf's ideas about what to do. He didn't offer any counter-explanation or anything. He just kind of says, no, we're not going to do that. And he's usually open to other ideas. Yeah, he felt like he was acting very out of character in this episode as far as that kind of stuff went. There were three people on the old Earth ship, so they brought him back over, and that's the B-plot of this episode. Well, that's supposed to be the B-plot, but the Romulans feel like they get way less focus until they actually show up at the end. It's definitely a mishandled episode structure there. Definitely. Beverly says, At the moment of death, they would be frozen, so that later, sometime in the future, presumably when medical science had found a cure for whatever killed them, they could be thawed back to life, healed, and sent on about their business. I didn't fully understand that. Okay, if you have some malignant tumor and you want to be frozen, why does it have to be the moment you die? Well, even the one woman, she doesn't realize that she was frozen. She doesn't even know what's happening. Did they happen to be right next to the cryo facility to get her in there immediately as soon as she died? They cured all their diseases or whatever was wrong with them because they have the technology now, but they're also alive. So does that mean that they technically can bring people back to life? That's a good question that they do not answer or even think about. It was such an original series moment when the one woman wakes up and she sees Worf and then she passes out again. Oh, that was awful. With that music? Yes. They apparently don't tell Picard that they beamed people over. He doesn't find out until he talks to Beverly after she's already cured everybody and woken them back up. Well, thawed them out at least. And she's explaining to Picard what had happened with them in the first place, the way they were frozen and everything. Beverly says that freezing people was a fad at the end of the 20th century. She says, People feared dying. It terrified them. As if that's a quaint little concept. So are these people in the future not afraid of death? They seem to act like relatively normal people most of the time, not people that are completely unafraid of death. I think that would change their approaches to a lot of the situations that come up in this show. It's just a dumb little thing to show how much people have advanced in the future in a way that doesn't make any sense and is stupid. 
The only one out of the three I really like is the guy played by Peter Mark Richmond. I like that actor. I know him from an episode of the original Outer Limits called The Borderlands. He was also in The Twilight Zone. He reminds me a lot of Ricardo Montalban. They look very similar to me. I just like his attitude. How he acts like such a dick to everybody and they don't know how to deal with him. It's stupid but entertaining at the same time, but a lot of the things that he's saying, even for his situation, don't make any sense. Actually, that's true for every character in this episode. It's really dumb sometimes. It's good once in a while to see a character come in that kind of throws the Enterprise crew off their game because they're so used to being in charge of everything and everything happening just so. That's true. Some of their reactions are enjoyable there. Every time the southern guy talks, we get that music. Well, he is easily the worst character in probably this entire show up to this point. Everything that he says is so stereotypically strange. They tried way too hard with that, and it's really aggravating. Riker is super dismissive of them just because they're from the past. Yeah, a lot of these characters feel like they don't have any patience, or they seem to not understand really what these other people are going through. They can't take two minutes to talk to them and explain things a little bit. It would be helpful to explain to these three people that they're basically on a military ship, but they don't tell them anything. What they should have done is said, here's the computer, you can ask it questions and it will give you answers. Or here's data, you can ask him questions and he'll give you answers. You know, sum up what's happened in between your time and this time. It would not take that long to just explain the basic differences. They leave them in the dark on purpose just because it forwards the plot of how inept they are. And that entire subplot doesn't go anywhere. They thaw the people out, now the people are on the ship, and at the end of the episode they're still on the ship, it's just that now they're a little bit more adjusted. But it doesn't go anywhere. This whole B-plot feels like it should have been its own episode. It still wouldn't have been a very good one. It's a good story idea if they had explored it properly and given it the depth that it needed. You think they would at least assign a crewman to watch these people? And it takes a while before any of them think about their previous lives and the fact that everybody else that they knew is dead. I thought Linda Hamilton handled it the best though. <laughs> So while all this is happening, the Enterprise is trying to find the Romulans, and Picard chooses not to attack them when they find them, and then it's revealed that a bunch of the Romulan outposts have been destroyed too, or not destroyed, they say scooped up, and then we get a very trailer-heavy moment when the one Romulan says, We are back. So nobody knows who did it. The Romulans are still jerks, just like they were back then. It's a much, much more effective introduction than the Ferengi were. Offenhouse is talking to Picard about all this money that he had invested before and how much it should be worth at this point. And Picard basically says money doesn't mean anything anymore. And Offenhouse says it's not about money, it's about power. Power to do what? To control your life, your destiny. And Picard says that kind of power is an illusion, which also doesn't sound like something that he would say, that the ability to control your life is an illusion. He's also speaking as the captain of a starship, the person in charge who decides what the ship does and where it goes. He's the last person who should be saying something like that, given both his position and his personality and everything that's happened in the show up to this point. There are so many scenes in this episode that are the same scene that we've already seen before, where these people are out of place, they don't understand, and everybody else is like, just shut up and wait here. There's a very inspiring speech talking about our way is not the past, it's going forward. Speaking to the audience watching the show, you know, we get this big majestic season finale music as they go forward into season two and hopefully better episodes. Yeah, it's almost like they're apologizing for this episode and saying you can expect more than this next time. It was a very, very weak season finale. Nothing really happened. The B-plot is totally inconsequential and a total waste of time. And it's a huge episode just to say three words. We are back. The Romulans didn't have anything to do with anything. Yeah. It was never revealed who destroyed either outpost. Well, they ask the Romulans if they know, and the Romulans say no. But after that, the ending of the episode is all kind of happy ending, but they know there's some kind of big threat out there. They know the Romulans are a threat now. It doesn't fit at all. At no point did they say, let's touch base with Starfleet and tell them what we know. They just say, let's go. Where? Where are you going? Why are you leaving? Right. Nobody seems to take anything that has happened in this entire episode into consideration. The Neutral Zone, season finale, season one, overall? Incredibly disappointing, really poorly handled character writing, really stupid, frustrating stereotype characters. 
the entire episode felt like a waste of time. Don't say you can expect better stuff later. This episode in itself, you could skip and not feel like you were missing anything. And you shouldn't be able to say that about the season finale. I would give it a D plus. Monotonous situations, stereotypical characters, clashing A and B plot, both seemingly inconsequential, very weak season finale. I'd go C minus.